U.S. President Joe Biden traveled to Oklahoma for the centennial of the Tulsa Race Massacre. Over two days in 1921, a racist white mob descended on a thriving African-American community, killing hundreds while destroying homes and businesses. Biden is the first sitting president to commemorate the attack. While there, the president announced programs aimed at combating chronic underinvestment in black and Latino communities, initiatives focusing on the housing market, infrastructure projects, and the awarding of federal contracts. Does anyone doubt this whole nation will be better off with these investments? It's about good paying jobs, financial stability, and being able to build some generational wealth. It's about economic growth for our country and outcompeting the rest of the world, which is now outcompeting us. This racial wealth gap creates economic disadvantages that can persist over generations. Joining me now to talk about that is Douglas Sloan. He's a principal at the consulting firm National Capital Strategy Group. He's also the first vice president of the D.C. chapter of the NAACP. So, Douglas, first I'd like to get your reaction to President Biden's proposals. We mentioned some of those there, addressing minority investment, the housing market, infrastructure. And you have the president of the United States engaged. How far will some of those things go in closing the black wealth gap? Uh, well, it's a start in closing the black wealth gap. Uh, there are a lot of issues that need to be addressed when uh, dealing with an issue like uh, trying to close the black wealth gap. Uh, you, he also mentioned uh, trying to address the disparities between home appraisals of black people and white people. Black people miraculously get their homes appraised for much less, which also affects black wealth. Uh, you also need to address disparities in education. Uh, you need to uh, try to level the playing field with small business loans and access to capital. All of these things are a move in the right direction, but ultimately you are trying to combat decades of systematic oppression and institutionalized racism that is baked into the fabric of America. And it's, it's a step in the right direction. Hopefully, these things can come to fruition, but it's going to take, it take years to get us here, and it's going to take years to get us out. That being said, I mean, how long can all of this take? I mean, some of it has to go through Congress. Some of it can be done by executive order. Um, and you mentioned decades of inequality. How soon can any of this come? Well, not soon enough. Uh, hopefully, with some of these executive orders, and again, right now, we're looking at a Democratic majority in the House and the Senate that will get some of these things passed uh, that we can implement. And uh, hopefully, we can just start on the road to recovery. Some of these things can be addressed right now. Many of these things can make a difference right now. But also, what's very important is consistency. Obama laid the groundwork for many great programs that were later dismantled by President Trump. So uh, not only do we need to take a step in the right direction with addressing these issues of systematic racism, but we need consistency and allowing these programs to take effect so they can really help people in this country for years to come. During the commemorations of the Tulsa Race Massacre, I've heard the word reparations. Where does the issue of reparations fall in this discussion? Well, in regards to Tulsa and Greenwood, uh, it is a very black and white issue. Uh, pardon the pun. Uh, these people and the ancestors, excuse me, the descendants of people that lost their property, lost their businesses, and often lost their lives as a result of this racist white mob that destroyed uh, 30 square blocks of businesses and homes and killed people randomly. That type of argument for reparations is really a non-issue. I mean, uh, this should just be cash payments to the descendants to try to right that wrong. Uh, we're looking at something that happened in the early part of the 20th century. We have people that are survivors of that race massacre that are still with us. Reparations should be a cash, a cash payment, not only to the survivors, but to the descendants of those people. Uh, I'll give you a quick example. J.B. Stratford was a hoteler 
uh, during that time. He owned the largest black hotel uh, in all of Oklahoma at that point. He was a very wealthy, successful businessman. His properties were burned, and he was run out of town. Uh, he fled to Cincinnati, Ohio, and, and later tried to restart his businesses in Chicago, but he was never able to duplicate that success. How do you make up for what could have been 100 years of starting your own business, uh, black hotels, black property ownership? It's the same thing that Trump's father did, except this guy had started earlier. There's no telling where the descendants of J.B. Stratford would be right now. How do you account for that? So reparations really wouldn't make up for it, but it's definitely a start in the right direction. All, right. All that generational wealth wiped out. Douglas Sloan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.